break. You want to make some more videos, and thanks to everyone who subscribed. Okay, then I can start with that. Are we rolling? Yeah. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Jeremy Freeman, and I made some videos a few years ago, and I'm making a new one here, and I'm trying to get back into it. So thanks for might... subscribing. Thank you for subscribing. Um, okay, so there's that. thought I'd try to make a video where I was actually playing the bagpipes a little bit more, and maybe that's something that people want to hear more of. So, um, I thought I'd you heard a little bit of my playing. I thought I'd talk a little bit about the bagpipe setup. Um, the bagpipes are notoriously difficult to get tuned, and um, I've spent lots of years really fretting about trying to get the sound that I want, and most of the time not even coming close to getting a bagpipe sound Oops. that. I think is satisfying and you know if you're a competitive player there are those moments where you you need to have it just right exactly at the right time and um, and it doesn't always happen and people are often kind of secretive maybe about their setups you know um, and you hear all those great players and you wonder what are they doing like what's their secret and different systems work for different people but I thought I'd talk a little bit about my system that I have now, which I'm pretty pleased with. I'm not sure exactly what make of pipes these are. I've been told they're, they're Henderson's um, or Laurie's. I um, bought them from Jimmy McIntosh when I was quite young. And um, so I don't know, they're either Henderson's or Laurie's, and he said they were made around the 1900s sometime. So. Um, that's about all I know. What are they made of? They're black wood and ivory. You gonna stick with them? You gonna stick with them for the long haul? Yeah, I thought about getting new pipes, and of course, I think I might get a set of nails someday, but... Nails? Nails, I think. Are nails? Nails. Can you spell that? N-A-I-L-S. Hey, the nails, the pipe maker. Okay. I want the bowl. Oh, you gonna open the box? Okay. Yeah. Um, these are uh, some reeds I got from Jack Lee and Sons bagpipes. Uh, I heard they started making reeds, and Jack Lee's always had a great bagpipe. So I ordered, I think, 10 reeds. Uh, How much did they cost? I think One? they're like, you have to look on the website. I think they're 12 or $15. We have to. A reed? 12 or 15 a read. And you get a discount if you get more than, if you get like 10 of them, I think. Um, so I got up some easy reads because I'm, I'm, I'm out of practice. And, um, you know, blowing the pipes is kind of strenuous. Um, I got five easy reads, five medium Dada. reads. I think I'm playing a medium. Read. So they make it easier to play? or? Yeah, the easy reads are, are quite easy, but quite vibrant. Um, Dada. Yeah. Are you doing? I'm talking about my bagpipe reeds. You want to zoom in on the reed a little bit? Sure. This is kind of like a hybrid reed in a way. There's a ridge right here on the shoulder of the reeds, but it's not one of those ridge cut reeds that a lot of people play in bands. E for easy. Um, I've played reeds like Troy reeds, um, Reads by Chris Apps, reads by Donald McPhee. I've had great results with those. Um, but this is what I'm playing now. It's got a navy blue wrapping to it, which is kind of a distinguishing feature. Um, most of the reads are just black. Um, and I'm really pleased, and it, this read is going really well with my nail chanter. So this is a nail chanter that I got probably in 2006. Um, careful now, don't touch. You gotta be careful not to shift the edges of the ring. And um, um, me and my friend EJ Jones bought a pair when we were playing with Piper the Rogues. Jones. PiperJones.com. Um, <laughs> and uh, we bought a pair from Donald McPhee. Um, I actually cracked it in half because I was taking it out of the chanter stock, and I know that this is something 
your if you your teacher is, will tell you not to turn that down here to take the chanter out because it'll snap. For twenty something years, I never broke a chanter until one night I did turn it from the bottom. I snapped it. EJ was like, "No problem." We, he super glued it back together right before the gig, and it still still goes pretty well. Um, with the Lee Reed, I have just minimal tape on the high A. Nothing on the F, nothing on the E, which is nice. I got to fool a little bit with tape on the low A, B, and C. Um, but for the most part, the tape stays in this position. The great thing about this read is I think they really figured out the... Sosha. This is Sosha. Does anyone want to say hello? Hello. Are you helping me with the video? Yeah. Yeah. What's this? A channer. A channer, yeah. What's that called? Um, I don't know. This is the reed. A reed. Yeah. And you blow it to make yeah. a sound. <laughs> um, one of the things I think they really figured out with the uh, Lee and Sons reeds. Dad, that was this is the high A and the high G are extremely vibrant and loud. I. Th uh, more so than any read I've ever played. Um, the volume on them is just... I don't know, there's something about the the, the volume on the, the high and the high G that's unique to this chanter, chanter read. Maybe in this chanter, I don't know. But um, And those are two notes that are always have been difficult for me. The high A, the high G. I've always felt like I've cha had to change my blowing a little bit to get them to come in tune the way that I want them to, and that can cause the drones to get a little unstable. But with these, they're the the pressure that you need for the high A. But for, um, for these reeds, um, the high and the high G are very easy to blow and very easy to keep steady. Keep steady. What is, what's that? A channer. And what's this thing up here? Uh, a reader! A reed. A reader. <laughs>